So folks, if you board any public transport these days, we see more than 90% of the passengers busy with their electronic devices or gadget rather than spending time with a human being next to him or her. Also, the pandemic has brought classrooms, office rooms and everything into our mobile phones. So no wonder it is a situation which is mandating us to use the digital devices or at times it might be our own addiction which is leading us to keep checking the phone every now and then do you think it is good and what are some of the long term consequences and are there any ways where we can deal with the situation hello hi there welcome to the guiding voice podcast series the guiding voice for a better future This podcast is to help professional students, IT employees and entrepreneurs to shape their careers and lives. Dear listeners, in every episode, we interact with industry experts or leaders or coaches or academicians across the globe to drive some insightful conversations that will help our audience learn great things. Also, we share an interesting trivia or a fun fact about the IT world or technology towards the end. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Naveen and with my co-host Sudhakar. So folks, you know it already. We are going to discuss the topic digital detox and mindfulness. And we are pleased to welcome Shika to our show. Shika Verma is a passion preneur, a dynamic and versatile leader with diversified skills. She acted as a culture custodian, custodian. in organization yeah. development. She has been a people architect as a happiness and mindfulness coach with 100 plus mentoring and coaching hours on one hand and system engineer on the other hand. Shika has been a certified ISO auditor and an audit with deep HR and training acumen across diverse cultures and age groups shikha has focused on future skills and well being since 2013. 2013 as a professional she is known for her perseverance creativity and passion to excel shikha welcome to our show thank you for taking time Thank you so much both of you for giving me this wonderful wonderful opportunity to Dakar and Naveen I think you guys are doing a brilliant work through this platform and it's an absolute pleasure to be addressing a topic like that which I think is extremely relevant by all means Absolutely without further ado let's get into the conversation then Sure So Shikha what is digital detoxification Okay, uh, I, I'll draw out some examples for both of us to actually relate to what I'm going to talk about. I think the detox word is something that we need to understand even before I talk about digital. <laughs> you know, when we talk about detox, we're talking about food items that are not good for our body. right something that's not working well in your system so if you talk about digital detox it's very clear that that digital world and the technology is perhaps not working in our favor in a lot of ways and since you started off navin on that note that we are forced to do a lot of things online today unfortunately because of the scenario being such this has uh, become a boon and a bane uh, ban both uh, we are seeing the side effects i think what's important is to realize how much of it is okay for you how much is going to be suitable for your body and your system and it doesn't harm you in any way so detox is largely in other words a balance something that you're aware of something that you're mindfully doing so that's about it yeah you touched upon the balance activity and the aspect of ensuring that we are not overdoing but how much is overdoing right so especially in this unprecedented pandemic situation that navin has alluded to is it really is it possible to stay away from gadgets because almost every transaction is digital and connected starting from paytm or google pay to zoom or uh, microsoft teams to the online consultation with both uh, schools and also to you know medical uh, profession so how much is good pretty pretty unfortunate that we have no great options in front of us other than resorting to these platforms right now even for any interaction with doctors consultants coaches we're all going digital uh, in so many ways but at the same time what i'd like to highlight here is it's about the intent of that interaction that matters then uh, you know if the intent is to actually heal yourself or kind of spend time with yourself and reflect go through a certain process for your own development i think the outcome of that kind of digital interaction 
is not as harmful. So I'm kind of rephrasing what we spoke about the first statement. What is digital detox? It's about knowing the fine line of balance and also constraining the ones that are unnecessary. The way you run lean processes in manufacturing companies, you do away with the redundancies, right? So there's a lot of redundancy in our you know digital consumption today. A lot of unnecessary things that we'd be browsing through you know, a website or Facebook or LinkedIn without any purpose and without any real uh, you know value addition to you. I think all of that can be done away with. So it's about being a little more vigilant and having your antennas up in terms of how you're consuming and using the digital platforms. Oh boy, you touched the wrong term with the wrong person. Lean <laughs> with Naveen. <laughs> the moment you talk about yeah. lean and Sigma, yeah, Naveen, that's... antenna goes up. Yeah, no wonder. I'm a, I'm a certified lean Six Sigma master black belt and I practice, I've been practicing lean for last 10 plus years and also that's why Sudhakar was talking about Wonderful. it. And as you mentioned, like, uh, yeah, when it comes to these digital devices, right? one thing what I observed, like people send the same message through email, through WhatsApp, app, right through Twitter, through LinkedIn, whatever it is, and uh, trying to get immediate attention. That is what something which is uh, very troublesome, right? If somebody is away from their mobile phone, like for an hour or so, it is making impossible for people to digest that saying that, hey, why the hell is not responding? That is leading to some impatience as well, right? So on that note, what is your perspective on the mindfulness? Because I have also come across an article uh, on Times of India, uh, which says uh, being mindful is bad in one sense. Really would like to hear your perspectives about it. (laughs) I read that intriguing article and I couldn't escape the headline. You know, the way they've titled the article, it just immediately got my attention. I so resonate with what they've mentioned. Um, You know, because mindfulness is again about pausing. It's about balance. It's about awareness. It's about being in the now more than rumification in terms of going to the past or catastrophizing in terms of going to the future every now and then. And this is exactly the situation in which most of us are. The pandemic is throwing a lot of fear into play. It's actually actually making us feel so challenged about the future. It looks all vivid and unsure. So we are concerned and unfortunately we are losing out the time and the moments we have today. So I'll have to I'll have to actually go back to the lockdown era or the lockdown phase that we've all seen last year. We were blessed because we were contained in our houses. Okay, We were kind of compelled to deal with each other and our own odds right and it did bring about a lot of evolution and it had its side effects also where people felt the relationships got strained or they had problems coming inside uh, you know within families for that matter but at the same time the biggest gift that people have got is that they've got time to themselves now right now because the lockdown is not imposed we're not choosing to do it you know that's how we are wired we we just don't uh, feel the need to do some something which is important for us just because it's important that's pretty strange about human psychology okay for for an example, you don't choose to wear a seat belt because it's good for your safety. You would do it when you see a tulladi, you know, at one nook and cranny of your traffic light. Isn't that absurd? And I also read somewhere, you know, as human beings, we don't like advices. You have the biggest advice on a cigarette pack, which says it's going to make you die, right? It's as dangerous. Look at the kind of pictures they use and look at our human brain. We're like, okay, damn it, I don't care and I'm going to smoke nonetheless. That's how our human psychology is. You know, we just don't like advices. So no matter how much we're telling the world to wear their mask, nobody is doing it. So coming back to mindfulness, it's about awareness. It's about accepting what you're doing and being wiser in moments where it's most required. You know, this is the time we have to take responsibility of not just our own selves, but also to secure our neighborhood, our humanity as a whole. And one person's carelessness can cost the lives of tens of hundreds of people, right? So it is the most crucial time of the society where mindfulness is required and we ought to be present and be wiser in moments of our decision making you know on a day-to-day basis so that's that (laughs) according to me wonderful i like that cigarette packet example and all and looking at the traffic cop we try to wear the seat belt or now it is mask as well because uh, traffic cops started imposing fines for not wearing masks as well good one and uh, shika talking about uh, the mindfulness while using devices how can we be more mindful about our device usage or the gadget usage 
through the gadget uh, usage i would recommend one to do it a little lesser as compared to doing it with your own self so i think mindfulness happens best navin when you're sitting down and focusing on your breathing and also kind of activating all your five senses so the minute you give yourself a 5 4 3 2 1 kind of an exercise which is five things that you can see four things that you can kind of smell maybe around you three things that you can feel two things that you can taste so you kind of activate all your senses and a thing that you can feel through your skin so that's a 5 4 3 2 1 there are several techniques there are several uh, methodologies that are available today and the internet is flooded with information you know what i really want to emphasize in this discussion today is that we choose to spend our time you know in a certain way so if you take out 20 minutes during the day to just kind of you know isolate yourself activate these senses connect with nature connect with sun in the morning for that matter you know just those 20 minutes will take care of your day because your orientation will improve your ability to perform will enhance your sense of calmness or the control inside will also improve drastically so you have apps today you have several of them you have inside timer you have uh, you know a couple of them that i have personally used during some workshops and they are good because they have guided meditation they have you know body scan sessions where they kind of just pull you down right from the head till the toe through you know guided music and all of it is scientifically uh, you know designed because music kind of revibrates the entire cells and the energy is in your body and it ultimately calms you down so they're very effective you can deploy one of those tools also when you're on the move and you really don't get time but i would assert take out 20 minutes in the morning to just do your deep breathing and calm yourself down by connecting to nature and the more you can find uh, your senses activated during the day to kind of see okay what did i just feel this texture what is it like can i just take a pause and feel it is it smooth what is the color you know how does it make me feel when i look at this color just those few moments even if it's 5 minute it brings a better sense of awareness immediately so that's powerful you know when you do that excellent shikha Ex- two components one the internet is uh, flooded with information and it is only up to you on what needs to be searched and what needs to be followed and the fact that you know you mentioned about apps that we are using using the same connection and uh, digital assets that we have been talking about so coming to and connecting to navin's introduction where do we draw the line that we are at digital addiction stage that we need to take a pause like you rightly mentioned and have that introspection and start this detoxification activity where do we draw that line of that addiction after that so it is I- like one case So I'll give you three tips that have worked for me fantastically. I realized this during the lockdown that I was getting too hooked up to LinkedIn and to Facebook because I was sharing stories. My intention was to go all out to encourage people. But then when I looked at the log and my husband did that for me, he's like, "You know what? How much time you're spending on social media? It's almost 7 to 8 hours." I said, "What nonsense. I can't be. You know, I could never ever imagine that I would end up spending that kind of time in front of screens. But invariably it was happening because I was doing webinars, I was doing some sessions, I was also getting hooked up to social media, you know, doing my own uh, blogs and all and this is this was the result. So there are two three commitments that I made to myself which work beautifully. One, I will not pick up the phone early morning for at least 1 hour. The first 1 hour has to be complete abstinence from any gadget including laptop. The last 1 hour also has to be without it. And at any point in time that i'm sitting with my family i will not hold on to the phone so there's a little concept of digital crutch which one of my learning partners from minds by introduced us to and i happily practice it and preach it to others have a digital crutch in your house whenever you're having your meals just you know the way you keep your children in the crutch you just kind of keep your phones happily in that space okay and pick it up when you're done with your meal and quality time with your family so that's essential i think that has a huge huge role to play in terms of our relationships and the quality of time we spend with each other invariably even if you have four members in the house all of them are busy with gadgets that's taking away a fair share of that happiness and laughter from the families so i think it's really critical that we manage and mindfully uh, you know plan the day in such a way that nobody feels too choked and controlled uh, you're making the best in the positive use of technology in 
gadgets and you're being mindful you know by doing this kind of uh, detox practices so 20 minutes in the morning abstaining from your digital devices early morning and late nights for sure and making it a point that you're not carrying your gadget or sitting with your phone especially when you have food with family great tips out there in fact uh, i've been practicing that uh, not to touch the mobile phone until one and a half hour from the time i wake up and recently i started one more activity of uh, not touching any digital devices an hour before sleep so it's been my third or fourth day and i'm sure i'll be successful there but i like this concept of digital crash wherein when so you are time with... question <laughs> yeah <laughs> can, sure. can i ask you a question do you have Absolutely. the fear of no mobile in your mind somewhere do you see some reactions in your body because i have observed that with especially youngsters they have a, a no more phobia okay no mobile phobia where they start <laughs> panicking and they're like the hands and their legs start shivering and they're like okay i need something <laughs> give me some and, and that's the time when you can tell yourself that you're getting addicted okay yeah. even more reason yeah. mm-hmm. why you need to control yeah that's why those attacks that's why that kind of uh, you know reaction comes through, through your body and your body is the first system that kind of gives you signs of what is catching you up in your head it's kind of uh, you know holding you back restricting your potential restricting your focus disability uh, affecting your output and that's research and proven that any amount of digital addiction actually results in far less of focus and energy levels so we just feel happier that we are engaged on the these platforms but it's actually taking away a fair share of your uh, results and your performance absolutely so again this reminds one of my previous conversations with um, our uh, group of friends wherein we mentioned the purpose for which with the devices and these applications that designed are different from why we are using today that is getting us into this addiction mode and all right so i completely concur mm-hmm. those are some amazing tips out there so shika this conversation has been very serious talking about uh, digital detoxification addiction and so on and so forth so let's spice up this discussion with a few rapid fire questions in case if you are ready Sure sure absolutely <laughs> wonderful so i'm going to ask you a few questions wherein you can briefly answer within one or two words that way we can that's difficult but i'll <laughs> let's try our best okay so here comes the first one shika perfection versus progress which one would you prefer progress outrightly it has to be advancement every single day doing your bit and ensuring that you are improving from who you were or what you were uh, perfection to me is is an evasive uh, term it never exists <laughs> and and uh, to relate that with our lean philosophy and all progress comes first perfection at a later point <laughs> all right here comes the next one what motivates you to get out of the bed in the morning everything really it's a beautiful world out there i think so motivating to see so many brilliant things happening around you and i i honestly feel even despite the covid era that we've all got immense opportunities to do good for humanity and that's what makes me get up in the morning and do my bit to change the world <laughs> what an and optimism spread happiness wonderful here comes the next one like if you can have a dinner party with any three people in the world either living or dead who is on your invite list apart from your family members Wow, that's a brilliant question. I really would have to think about it. <laughs> Three people I would like to have dinner with would include APJ Abdul Kalam. It would include uh, Michelle Obama. Mm-hmm. and it would include uh, Oprah Winfrey wonderful these yes, are sir. three people i totally admire and uh, for all their qualities as a authentic leader for their humbleness and their ability to take uh, tens and hundreds and thousands of people along with them in terms of uplifting their lives uh, truly an inspiration in every way possible Amazing. So I would love to have dinner with them. That's amazing. So Shika, here comes the real bullet. A crime you would <laughs> like to be caught for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The crime. Okay, right now I want to die. So I think I I would love to get caught for uh, eating a chocolate or having my favorite pie. <laughs> And that's something that I perpetually have to follow because uh, of my body type. And I feel that fitness is a key to happiness. So I think that's one crime that I would love to get caught for. <laughs> <laughs> during a non cheat day specifically <laughs> interesting uh, do you believe in karma or destiny karma hands down and my philosophy of karma is slightly tweaked from what uh, most of us uh, kind of get uh, as children that whatever it is you're destined to suffer if there is a suffering or uh, whatever there is you're destined to enjoy if you know you have good parts in your life to my assessment and because i practice buddhism i strongly believe that you create good karma and you undo the misfortune that you, that is accumulated because of any past bad uh, karma and karma is something that you end up 
kind of reaping benefits of not just for yourself but also for your own family and your extended families so you always have a way to do more good for humanity and that way you have immense amount of blessings and uh, you know mystic magical protections happening in your life which i have experienced so it is karma outrightly great here comes the last great. one for the rapid fire if you are given a magic wand what would you use it for what would you- I would use it to. Am I allowed to say this? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. To vanish COVID from. Yeah, I would just vanish this COVID from the world, <laughs> so that all of us are living in peace and doing all our social gatherings, having all our fun parties. I so miss catching up with my friends and family members and meeting up with people. I think uh, that's the blood or the energy that we are all thriving on, and uh, so want everything coming back to normal. If I can do away with coronavirus. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for being so sport in the rapid fire round, Shika. Over to you, Sudhakar. Excellent. Thank you, Shika. One final question for this session: What is your one piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers? I would say that. Uh, can I just quote this from Lucretius? He says that the drops of rain make a hole in the stone, not by its violence, but by often falling on it. So that kind of highlights the. importance of consistency and focus in life so no matter how big your goal and dream is everything is achievable provided there are two things that you believe in one that you're a winner and the other your own consistency of effort so that's all that's important excellent belief and consistency are two aspects that can make us what we want to become or beyond thank you so much for taking time for us shikha It has been an amazing session, and I will definitely remember this digital crash and try <laughs> to follow it in my life and try to influence others to follow in them so that they can have some life beyond the gadgets as well. Thank you so much. Superb, superb. Great to hear that, Sudhakar. And wish both of you good luck again. Thank you for having me on this conversation. Thank you so much, and pleasure is all ours hosting you. And folks, if you have liked this episode, please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues for whom you care for. Because the Guiding Voice podcast series is a purely not-for-profit venture, and our team puts in a lot of effort to bring the best conversations to all our listeners. And our purpose is very clear: we want to provide curated guidance to all the professional students out there, be it from engineering, B schools, and all the IT employees and entrepreneurs, so that all of you can make in. formed decisions based on the insights that are driven by the industry experts coaches leaders or academicians across the globe because if you share this with your friends it helps them also learn great insights from every episode or if you are listening to the guiding voice podcast on the apple podcast please do not forget to leave a review and a five star rating because every rating will help us expand our reach and contribute to our mission to shape the careers and lives of millions of people across the globe and if you are watching the episode on youtube Please do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And last but not the least, I want to reiterate: please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues. Thank you so much in advance. All right, so it brings us to the trivia segment of today's episode, and today's trivia is about hacking. So, folks, do you know how many websites are hacked every day? You may be thinking about the answer, but let me reveal. As per our ritual, it's about thirty thousand websites are hacked every day. Isn't it a quite big number? But it is a reality. In fact, cyber criminals who are more talented than the actual developers. and the techies certainly use a lot of sophisticated software to search for the vulnerable sites which are easy to hack and the internet is full of hoaxes as well as hazardous viruses so these websites are prone for attacks and hacking so we got to be very careful about accessing unsecured links etc i know this is very scary but interesting isn't it thank you for listening there's more in store folks stay tuned take care be safe until next time bye bye and we are signing off for today